don't care what the fucking venue is. I don't care if it's Instagram, Facebook, MySpace, or, or Teletype. If there's somebody there, I'm going to be where they are. Gary Bay, no Chuck is in the building. What's up, man? Life is good, man. Thanks for having me. Get how pumped I am on doing the show. My oh, man, Taz Daddy. Yes, yes sir. I'm to make millions for, for other people. I can make millions for Year in, year round. He not a rookie. He a man of many hats and different skills. Give him many struggling business and watch him make it bill. Hard to believe and please check the resume. Best selling author and showcase on Ebony. Two time Southern Entertainment Award winner. Yeah. We in there. We in there like swimwear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good times, people. Crazy. Wow. Good times. Caleb, how you feeling, buddy? Man, I feel blessed, man. Glad to be here. How about yourself? I am feeling very, very good. Hey, that's what I like to hear, man. Very good right now. <laughs> a good time for me. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. So, you know, man, I'm um I'm excited about everything, but when am I not excited about everything? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm uh, I'm excited, man. Ready to start the show. Welcome to everybody who is in here. Make sure you share the video. Um, yeah. It's the podcast. We then move the podcast from uh, from uh, IG Live so that we <laughs> can, you know, do a lot more suicidal hype shit. Yeah. Hey, let's do know. it. And uh, I'm excited, man. So, you know, you can leave your comments. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been a heck of a week. So I'm sure you got a million and one questions. Man, Dave. I've been holding back from texting you because I know oh, Lord, I already know. Hold on. <laughs> Get my ass in here. Yo, All right, go I ahead. Was like, I was like, man, I got to text the OG, but then I had to catch myself because I knew if I texted you, it would lead to a phone call, and that would be like the podcast already there. One of the biggest things is, as a young creative, and something that has caught my attention is Joe Budden's uh, situation with Spotify. And what scared me is – I've been checking off the list recently and I'm like, yo, Dave has called literally all of this stuff like last year in 2019 when I thought like when you told me this stuff, I was like, dang, for real. And I'm not going to say any names. It's been scandals <laughs> that, that you called. And now with, with Spotify, you were already telling me about this. And this is why or one of the main reasons of having business bully TV. Mm -hmm. So I know some people are on Spotify side with this, situation and some people feel like joe budden as the creative that he's right where where he stands so overall what are your thoughts on seeing joe budden talk about white corporate america not really understanding our business which is what we've said all the time and then two do you feel like he was savvy as a businessman with his business acumen when it comes to did he sign the right type of contract Wow. Loaded question. Yeah, very loaded. Very loaded answer. Yeah. Um, and while we're talking, everybody, you can feel free to uh, put in your questions, as always. Um, I knew when Joe Budden was leaving that situation with the, the kid who looks like Jerry the Mouse. I can never call his name. <laughs> DJ, whatever the hell his name. I got to take my cousin. Academics. Thank you, that. Yeah. Right. So call Everyday him, struggle, I think. Yeah, every day sure. When he's leaving that situation, I'm like, okay, he's going to go off and do his own thing. Mm -hmm. Like, this is going to be good for Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, am I a huge Joe Budden fan? No. Because sometimes I feel like some of the hills he wants to die on are not hills that I would necessarily die on. Mm, okay. Um, okay. Like, when you're 20 years old, you don't think with the mind of a 40-year-old. So... You had the biggest hit of 2000, aside from any Beyonce records, you had the biggest hit of 2003. Pump It Up was, you might be too young to remember. You got served? I remember that. Bro, like, yeah, I must have played that record in heavy rotation easily. <laughs> wow. In a week, 50 times. Wow. You know, that thing, pump, pump, pump. To this day, That's like, it. I love that record. I yeah. It's a great record. I understand that you grind me, you got more bar. I don't know them shits. <laughs> I know pump, 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 but I digress. The thing with the Joe Budden situation is the same thing that I tell everybody else, right? There's this mentality of if I get on the inside, then mm. I can change things. It's, it's what I yeah. call the group that sat by the door myth. Mm. Okay. Because I need you to understand that when it comes to business, you know, and this is coming from the guy that created the thing that you now call podcasting. When you start talking about, I'm going to get in there, they don't know what they're doing either. Mm. 
But because they're white, we automatically assume that they're in control. And you're right, they are in control, but they have no control over what's happening to them. They're just adjusting. And because they have white privilege and the money and, 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 and the means of production, they can make it look like they know what they're doing. I've been in buildings and you can kind of figure out if you know my history, which buildings those were. Mm-hmm. And I have seen corporate people go and look at other radio personalities since I've retired and say, oh, that's such and such. And I don't know mother two, but I know such and such. And I know that this one show is responsible for almost 70 percent of our YouTube revenue. Don't know their names, but know how much they're responsible for. Like that tells you everything that you need to know right then. So with the Spotify situation, right? I, look, I called that a year ago. Yeah. You know for a fact. I and that's a, a fact. Ago. Yo, we have text messages to prove this. It's a fact. It's a fact. I, listen, yeah. I, I can look at this. When you understand how somebody thinks, that's why I tell everybody, go get Sydney Portier as a measure of man. Mm. When you understand how somebody thinks, mm. you don't have to worry about what they'll do. Mm. If you're walking with somebody, right? One of two things happens. Either you speed up to catch up to where they are, or they slow their pace to allow you to catch up with them, mm. right? They're never going to do that. For 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 this, for this people who don't understand, Joe Budden had a deal with Spotify, yeah. right? The deal was shit. I knew the deal was shit when he signed the deal, mm. right? But, you know, you figured that they're going to, they're going to live up to their promises, and I, I've talked about this before, the scorpion and the frog. You know, scorpion says, hey, Mr. Frog, let me jump on your back. You know, you you take me across the river. He's like, yo, you're going to sting me. He was like, why would I sting you mm. when it's in my best interest to keep you alive so I can get across the river? So halfway across the river, sure enough, the frog feels a pinch. And he says, why? And the scorpion says, I'm a motherfucking scorpion. Mm. So when you know you're dealing with scorpions who don't give a fuck about you because all you are, his words, not mine, all you are are numbers to them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you understand that you what you were doing when it was getting one-on-one with the fans, you already understand engagement. When you had the hottest show, you know, on Complex, tell me what you needed them for. Hmm. You already have enough money to pull it off. I was having this conversation with somebody who shall remain nameless, and I was talking about the difference between me and other people of my ilk. Mm-hmm. And I was saying that the thing about it is I don't go out here and crowdfund to put out my movies. I don't crowdfund to put up my podcast. I don't crowdfund to build Business Bully TV. I build it all in my own pocket. Mm. Not because um, I don't want people to participate in the process, but I like to have full autonomy. If I fuck up, you can't say shit. Mm. If I fuck up or the ball drops or some unforeseen circumstance happens, you can't pull the bottom out from under me. It's my bottom. Wow. You understand? Yeah. When yeah. you look at the Revolt TV situation, there were only two networks that carried fire con speech on the 4th of July. One was Revolt, the other was mine. If you go on Revolt's YouTube page, you can't find that speech. It's you been go taken to down. TV, it's right fucking there. Wow. When you don't own your shit, mm. they own your shit. That's a bar. And what happens is, no matter how you try to spin that, yeah, you should be sitting on $100 million a year. Easy. And you would have. You could have easily found, you could have went to, every, you're Joe Budden. And this is my opinion, and I could be wrong, and no, I don't know all the details. Y'all can play that. You don't know all the details, card all the fuck you want. But how about a year before this shit was popping, before y'all knew about it, I knew that this was one. You could ask this man. He got the text messages to prove it. Yeah. And I wasn't talking shit. I'm just looking at the industry. It's what I do for fun. You know how some of you knuckle dragging mouth breathing Negroes will sit around and, and tell tell me how many triple doubles LeBron had? I don't fucking mm. know. Mm. But I can tell you who's going to make money this year and who's going to fail miserably. Wow. That's what I study. So when I told this man, he was like, uh, "You sure?" I'm like, "Yeah, no. like Joe Budden, because you know at the time you think he's the man. You know what I mean?" Listen, um, there uh, was these two Bengal tigers, these two white Bengal tigers that worked for Siegfried and Roy. Hmm. One of them white Bengal tigers decided to slice Roy's face all the fuck up. How much money was the tiger making every night on the Vegas Strip? Nothing. 
Nothing. He was yeah. just a tiger. You're there to see the beautiful white Bengal tiger, but the, the fuck was the white Bengal tiger's name? You don't fucking know because you know Siegfried and Roy. Mm. Every time Joe Button showed up, he showed up like a white Bengal tiger. Beautiful to look at, intriguing to watch, edgy as deep danger. He don't own shit. And he says it himself. They tried to give me used Rolexes. In a 360 deal for a podcast. They're doing 360 deals for radio company for our radio personalities now. Why? They own your name, they own your YouTube channel, they own your playlist, they, they own everything about you. Wow. But you thought that you was going to get in bed and you was going to be the one to change them. That's like when when, when people get in relationships, both men and women, I've seen do this, and say, yeah. you know what? This person is <laughs> tender, love, and care. Mm. What a ludicrous saying, oh, for you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. housewife. Yeah. Hoes don't act right. There's hoes on the mission, there's hoes on the crack pipe. Mm. Right? What, 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 what people don't understand is we've always been the talent. Yeah. We are rarely the owners. And anytime we're an owner, it comes with one of their strings attached. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's a reason that Jay-Z did Rock Nation. Not Rock 2. Rock, rock Nation. Nation. Because rock, Lob Nation's involved in Lob it. Nation, there's, yeah. never, there's never a deal that Jay-Z has done that does not involve white people on some level. Mm. That's not a diss to Jay-Z. I love what he does. I love yeah. what he does with his money. I love his business acumen. I don't like his practices. Mm. Personally, I'm more of a Dame Dash guy. And so when it comes to Joe Budden's situation, Joe Budden's 100% right. But the problem is Joe Budden signed that deal two years ago. And he even says in the podcast, well, you know, um, I wanted to, you know, I kept hearing voices in my head telling me I should honor the deal. Okay. um, If your wife was the, the 2020 Bukaki champion and there were tapes all over Pornhub, would you still honor the deal you made? Nope. Or are you charging her ass to the game? Because she everybody's wife. What did LeBron say? Yeah. I'm taking my talents to Miami Beach. Yeah. But there's never a conversation where it's like, I'm going to bet all the way on me. Because all you needed was a webcam. All you needed was a studio. All you needed. You could get a sales team from anywhere to sell that shit. You're Joe fucking Button. Man, you, you got 500,000 podcasts on Spotify and you're number one. They can't tell you who number, no, they won't tell you who number two is. And is this, that's is this what, probably like a big gap between him and number two. But then chasms, we'll that. bro. Chasms. Mm. So if it's chasms between number one and number two, and they keep moving the goalpost about your, your, your points mm-hmm. and about your bonuses, that tells you right then they don't respect you. At that mm. point, they're in breach of contract. At that point, you mm. have every right to audit them. Mm. Unless somehow there's a cause in there that says that you can't audit them, which I've never heard of in the history of ever, but nothing surprises me. I will give you a real world example. Mm-hmm. Before I retired from what you now know as iHeart, um, the first couple of months I was there, the GM stops by my office. And he says to me, kid, I like what you do. I like the cut of your jib. If you hit these numbers, I will double your salary in a year. I said, really? So what do I do? Just hit these numbers? You double you double these numbers, I double your salary. I said, boop, challenge accepted. <laughs> so just like the Pied Piper goes to the to, goes to the mayor's office mm. after he rid Hamlin of the mice mm. and got rid of them rats, he goes in to see the GM, that would be me. And I'm like, oh, well what's up? And he's like, what you mean? What's up? I said, a year ago today, you came to my office and said, if I double these numbers, mm-hmm. that you were going to double my salary. Well, it's been a year, <laughs> I doubled the numbers, and I'm waiting for that increase. Mm-hmm. He said, I'm going to get back to you. No sooner did I walk around the corner back to my office was um, two underlings under him, my direct boss, like, why'd you go to the GM? And I said, I went to the GM because the GM was the one who came to me with this. So why am I going to go to the man under the man next to the man when the man said he was going to cut my check and double my salary if I double these numbers? You got the numbers. Did I double them? Yeah. Are you in a position right now to double my salary? No. Who's in a position to double my salary? The GM. See why I'm not talking to you? Now all of a sudden I'm crazy. Now all of a sudden I got an attitude problem. Now all of a sudden I, 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 don't, I don't know how to play ball. I'm problematic. 
I got an attitude? No, what I am is a guy that revolutionized the way that you do business at this company to this day. Mm. I want my money. <laughs> so, and they didn't give me my money. So I was like, all right, cool. So so now I know what it is. Yeah. So your word means nothing at this point. So now I'm like, start the clock. Mm. And at that point, I was like, okay. And I already told I already told my wife, I was like, yo, I'm getting ready to get fired. She's like, why you said that? I said, because they're hawking me for everything ever since I said what they promised me. Mm. You know, I said, but I'm not doing this shit no more. She's like, what you gonna do? I said, I don't fucking know, but I'm gonna retire. I'll figure it out. They came after me in the first place. Somebody else will come after me. I ain't really beat for it. The difference is when I saw the writing on the wall, I, I got out. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you thinking that you're going to figure it out or you're going to be the honorable one. They're not honorable. There's no honor amongst thieves and they're stealing from you. And they're doing it all in the name of management and growth and da, 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 da. But the numbers are never quite right. The situation is never quite right. <laughs> And so that is what happened with Spotify. So, you know, like, God bless him. I I wish him nothing but the best. I wish him nothing but success. But to be blatantly and brutally honest with you, I don't see a world where Joe Budden is going to be able to um, survive unless he does what he needs to do on his own. And he's 100% right. Like, and I mean, Charlemagne, one of my best friends, but he's 100% right. Charlemagne does not own the yeah. means of production. But by that same token, both of y'all are two employees fighting. That's what I said. About who's, who's got the best master. There you go. Oh. There you go. You took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So then, Dave, like, do you think it makes more sense? Because I feel this way, and we've talked about this. I feel like from a business standpoint, it makes more sense to just stick to what you have and monetize your platform. Like what you said with Joe, if Joe wasn't signed to Spotify, I can argue that he could have made more money because he's not splitting it with Spotify. Like he's getting everything. He knows how it's coming in. So for all these young creatives out here who have podcasts, should we look to get that deal or should we just go pretty much all money in? Here's the thing, right? And maybe it's because I'm almost 43 years old. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I got a daughter not too much younger than you. Maybe it's because I started this situation in 1987. Mm -hmm. Maybe because in 1997, I created on-demand audio. Maybe it's because I've done TV, had pilots that got picked up by other people. Maybe it's because I've been to the circus and I'm just a jaded, bitter old man, but the one thing I ain't is broke. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I have patience now. When I was in my 20s, I ain't had no patience. Hmm. I could wait. I'll wait. Because yeah. sooner or later, now that you come around to seeing it my way, you won't regret it, babe. And you surely won't forget it, babe. Meaning that I'll be right here when y'all figure it the fuck out. Yeah. I got time. Everybody told me I was crazy. Why not do this, that, and the third? It's funny. After I start my own network, here come BET. Hmm funny how that happens funny how since i've been doing this situation i just i just keep showing up in places that i'm not supposed to be in that other people pay to be in Mm. funny how that just keeps happening so i'm okay with betting on me i will forego the satisfaction right now so that in a few years i'm literally unstoppable right now for scandal hits you might choose not to fuck with me. That's fine, but you can't cancel me. Hmm. I call my. I'm beholden to no one, other than my employees, and even them. They get a they get a payroll check from ADP because I pay ADP to issue their payroll checks. The name on that check, I signed them all by hand. Hmm. Dave Anderson. Hmm. That is the difference. I'm telling you, if you're young, you got all the time in the world to build. Why you need it right now? You ain't even thinking about having a house. Yeah. Why do you need it right now? Why is the nut got to be so quick right now when you got all the stamina right now? That's a good analogy right there. Yeah. What are you you rushing for? What's with the the wham bam? Why are you rushing? Yeah. Light some candles. (laughs) Set the mood. Set the mood. Let me help you out. (laughs) Needs to be y'all out here. 
let me dim this shit down for you. <laughs> let me just let me just let me just slow it down a little bit. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, like, no, <laughs> what they want to do is be out here rushing a situation. Like, mm. dim the lights. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Like, build your situation up to be so valuable. That they got to come to you. And when they come to you, they can't come with, with bullshit. Like, if you come at me, you're going to, like, I, I built myself out to a point that when I retired, I got 27 job offers and turned them all down. There was there was one or two I said yeah to, but then it got a little shady. I was like, nah, I'm out. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I no longer, when, you, when I don't need you, my power is in the ability to walk away from the table at any given time. That's real. What, That's what, real. What the fuck I need you for? Yeah. The uh, only paychecks I see are the one I sign. Mm. That's not bragging. That's trying to change your mindset. Yeah. Once I got off of the addiction of consumerism, hmm. and once I understood that it's better to use liabilities to pay for assets mm. instead of treating dumb shit like assets and assets like something that old people get it it, it was on and cracking mm. build and take, take your time. time that's facts there's nothing else to, like what do you have to do that you need to do right now mm. that you mm. can't wait they will come yeah if it's if good consistent and you're winning they're gonna find you yeah, ET hit me up. I was like, "Yo, how did you find me?" Oh yeah, well we saw your Instagram. We downloaded a couple of uh, eBooks. We've been watching. Been watching. Been watching. Been watching. I got people who hit me up. Will drop twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars on me and be like, "Yeah, I've been watching you for years. I just wanted to make sure I got my bread up before I came to you." <laughs> wow. And I'm like, bet. But see, if I was like y'all and be like, "Oh, oh, oh, ninety-seven dollar course, thirty-seven dollar course," I'd still be working a job like most of y'all. Not you, but yeah, no, no. Hey, I'm listening. I'm listening, man. You good? Like that's the thing. We get a, we get addicted on on flossing for people who don't matter. Mm, mm, mm. When I did the BET situation, this is the probably last time I say BET. But when I did that situation, I went out. We got a different setup because they can't have no uh, no license. Marvel, yeah, no Marvel, none of that. So. I put my office so that you can shoot in different in different rooms, mm-hmm. you know, in different parts of the room. Mm-hmm. So we set up, you know, we, we set up a uh, we we set up a bookcase, and I got my clients' products up. I got a couple of smart books up. You know what I'm saying? I did all that stuff. Then I went and I got uh, I got a I got like a three hundred dollar Robert Graham shirt, um, some um, some True Religion jeans, and I put on my pair uh, one of my pairs of uh, Louboutins. You know, and my Patak Philippe. Getting clean. Yeah, I mean, because I wanted to send a message. Right, right, right. What right. they told me was, there are people right now who don't think they can be successful in this environment, and you're being successful in this environment. Mm. Hey, yo, 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 what up, what up, what What's up? up? What's up? Um, and so they wanted me to show them what success looks like and how that happens. Mm. You know, and they wrote me a check to do so. So I was happy to take that check. Mm. And it informed my people on a massive level. I'm mm. not going to turn down the opportunity to be in front of 7 million people. You'd have to be a moron to do that. That's right. You know, but if I had played the game short-sighted, quick nut, hit it mm. and quit, rabbit punch style, like most of you millennials do, mm. they'd have never found me. I'm just now, literally yesterday, I just hit 20, 000, uh, 22,000 on Instagram. You know, and I don't really care about vanity metrics. Yeah. But y'all do. Mm. I don't really care about five figure watches, but y'all do. Mm. I don't really care that the bottom of my shoes are red, but y'all do. Mm. I don't care about these two carrot dolphins, but <laughs> y'all do. Yeah. So even when I dress like a bum, I'm still the most expensive bum you know. Mm. And that's the thing. Like, I'm building, boom, right there. I'm building for my last name. Mm. And, and I was told us, you can go back and look at videos. I say it all the time. I made the last name Anderson mean something other than Windows. That's mm. E, not O N. Mm. You dig? Like I'm, I, I meant my name. Me, I meant my last name to mean something. Right. 
So now you know, like, oh, okay, cool. So now when you see my oldest kid, I'm like, oh, well, shit, he's an Anderson, no wonder. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's a standard. Mm. That does not happen overnight. And then also, and this is the last thing, unless you ask your next question. No, 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 you good, Dave. Also, this, this, this is extremely important because I need people to understand this. When I left radio behind, mm. that entire audience went with them. They, <laughs> they got that. I didn't get that. So <laughs> I did Tina Turner. I'm just, I'm just taking my name. That's it. And then I dropped my name mm. and picked up my government. Mm. So I started from zero. So I don't want to hear shit about people talking about how hard it is. Fuck you. How hard it is you grow up doing something for 25 years and mm. then you drop it and then you rebuild and you come talk to me about how hard it is. As a grown man, you got grown man responsibilities too. That's even more pressure. Okay. All day, every day. I got people looking at my wife crazy. I got people looking at me crazy. All this, that, and the third. Like, all of those things happen to me. So I don't want to hear about your little hardship stories because you didn't get enough likes. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what yeah. I mean, I might I might not be as well-liked as some of your favorites, but I'm very well-liked at my banks. I'm your favorite's favorite, though. That's all that matters. Hey. He <laughs> sips the monster on that. <laughs> Listen, man, and, and, and I tell folks, it's not... Like the other thing that young people get lost on because they get fed a lot of bad information. Mm-hmm. It's not what you know, it's who you know. That's a lie. Yeah. It's who knows you and is willing to admit it. Mm. But when you get caught up in trying to be seen or trying to get your little fucking selfies on and yeah. all that little dumb shit that doesn't really matter, you miss out on the opportunity to brand yourself. You miss out on the opportunity to grow your stuff. And, and, and I talked about this earlier today. Like, we keep looking for some magical person to come along and put us on. Yeah. And that person is not coming. Mm. No matter how no matter how hard you try, no matter how uh how uh much you want it to happen, that magical person ain't coming. Yeah. That magical person is a myth. And so what winds up happening, what winds up happening is you get stuck based upon you know, immature, ignorant beliefs that somebody is going to come and help you get to where you need to get to, you have to be the one uh, to put yourself up. You got to be the one to put yourself on. And that's just what that is. That's facts. That's facts, Dave. And that actually segues perfectly because I know during this time, some people or a lot of people want to start their platforms, their podcasts, blogs, like all of these mediums, which are great. But two, it's like we're looking for somebody to sponsor us or somebody to sign us. So how can we build our own platforms effectively? Because again, you know, my age group, if, if, if it's not at 100K followers, I'm failing. So how do we build our audience? And two, how do we build our platforms? Yep. So here's what I want to do before I answer that question. I want to take a real quick break. Oh, yeah. You good. And when we come back, I'm going to hit you with the answer of how we build out our platform. So we're going to be right back after this. Yeah, and back we're back. It. Hey, this official, man. We got commercial. Oh, we got and commercial everything. and everything. We out here doing <laughs> things. So the answer to your question, how do you build out a platform when you got all this stuff happening and blah, 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 blah. The main thing is this, right? It doesn't really cost a whole lot to have your own website. Mm-hmm. It doesn't cost a whole lot. Um, if you do it the right way and don't get with shady motherfuckers to have your own app, mm. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, um, it doesn't cost a whole lot to be consistent, mm. you know, and that's the thing that I think we miss out on because we worship the big shit. I'm going to tell you what I mean, and I'm going to tell you how fickle black people are, and this ain't no diss to my people. I keep it fun because when I say black people, I'm talking about me too. I might be a little bit more enlightened than many, but I ain't perfect. (sighs) 
Oh, damn, I got to use it a fucking again. I didn't want to say it. Not but it. I've been putting I've been putting content on Business Bully TV since February 3rd, 2020. Mm. Right? And people are like, oh, that's nice. That's cool. <laughs> I, listen, I put up that one graphic that said BET House Party. Oh, 537 shares, 2,000 comments, blah, 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 mm. skimmy bop. Mm. Y'all want to, like... Y'all are so worried about the big shit, but I can remember when BET didn't have shit on it, but Bobby Jones Gospel and Video Soul. Yeah. And the reason they had Video Soul is because Donnie Simpson was the number one afternoon drive guy in D.C. Mm. He was local and everybody knew him because BET at the time was based in D.C. Wow. So y'all like to poo-poo humble beginnings. You know what I'm saying? The Fox Network, before they went and bought Disney and Marvel and all that other shit, I'm um, sorry, before Marvel and Disney bought Fox, um, they only had Married with Children, 21 Jump Street, The Tracy Ullman Show, and The 10 O'Clock News. Mm. That's all the fuck they had. Like, that was wow. their big thing. Well, you do News at 11, we do that shit at 10. Woo! Wow. We got a bunch of, we got a bunch of young-ass, hot-looking teenagers going undercover in high school. Ooh, you know, we got a show designed for Sam Kennison and Roseanne Barr with a couple of unknowns you don't really know that fucking well. And one guy spends the whole fucking thing on a couch with his hand in his pants. And when he's not, he's, he's fucking buying, he's selling shoes to motherfuckers and talking about how good he was in high school. <laughs> like that was their lineup. On the Tracy Ullman show, they had a skit. That skit went on to become The Simpsons. Tracy Ullman is nowhere to be found. Mm. Don't knock humble beginnings. You know, um, and that's the thing. I understand that for some people, my shit ain't big enough, but it's cool because it's big enough for Forbes, mm. big enough for Yahoo Finance, it's big enough for Black Enterprise, it's big enough for Entrepreneur Magazine, it's big enough for BET, and it's big enough for me because I yeah. own the shit. Be consistent. And then get with real people. Yeah. Get that's with a real big one. People. Like some of y'all want to be on, and y'all will sacrifice quality to be with somebody who's flashy and hot for a moment. That's like that's like leaving um, that's like leaving Janelle Monet to go on tour with Flo Rider in 2008. Sounds like a good thing to do in 2008. You want to go on Flo Rider's tour right now? Nah. I ain't think so. That, that's the thing. Like You got to surround yourself with good people who are willing to share the vision. You know, every time I turn around, y'all got something out your mouth talking about, oh, I, I don't, I, I can't, and I don't know how, and I'm not sure if if, if I can, and, um, <laughs> you know, I'm like, did you try? Nope. Like, there's going, like, your time is coming. Mm. I went to my mom when I was a kid, right? And I saw all these other kids, like, Killing it. Like, I'm on Saturday morning. I'm on Saturday morning on CBS every single Saturday, you know, except for when we're in the off season. I'm on with new episodes every single Saturday on CBS in, in 30 million homes, and I'm 14. And I'm like, yo, like, when am I going to get my shot? Like, when is my thing? Like, and then I'm looking, and there's people popping up like an overnight success. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, you know, when do I become an overnight success? So she said, Oh, you got another. Probably another 25 years. I said, Mom, well, we've been at this for five. I got 25 more to go. She was like, Yeah, it takes 30 years to make an overnight sensation. Mm. So, what my mom was trying to tell me is you got to be patient. You got to be patient. And that's hard because everybody tells y'all you're supposed to have everything right now. Yeah. But I'm wanting to tell you that you have to grow into whatever it is. And you have to be ready for it. So every single, every single failure, every single opportunity I've already had prepared me for everything that that came later. Mm. And all the bullshit I, I had to deal with in 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, that got me to this point, you know, has made me handle the things that I've handled to this point in the way that I've handled them. So you got to be okay with, eh, laugh right now. Mm. It's cool. Because I'm going to remember that you laughed. I ain't going to hold it against you. I'm just not going to fuck with you. Wow. So I just make a listen. I keep it pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Hey, you killing this. You killing this. 
So, yeah. Dave, if you were in Joe Budden's shoes, because I feel like his situation is very unique because it's like as an artist in music, it's as if we're watching the first music deal and learning, yo, they will like F you over. Like they'll take your rights and they'll use you. And to see somebody of Joe Rogan's caliber, like what you said about sitting it out, he sat it out and he came in after all the deals were signed. So then he could charge more and he signs for a hundred mil. So if you're in Joe Budden's shoes right now, what would be your next move? Hmm. Great question. I paused for a minute because I wanted to say something immediately, mm-hmm. but I said, no, nah, I'm going I'm to think before I speak. Okay. So my next move, go completely independent. Mm-hmm. I agree. And then when it comes to distribution, mm. I will do a distribution deal with you mm-hmm. and I'll give you 20% of gross revenues. Mm. Because if the money he made for all them white people know the money he made for Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> and all them white people understand that he's not going to get back in bed with nobody else. And it don't matter if he don't ever do Spotify numbers ever again. He's Joe Budden. You can't take it from him. Mm. So even if he does half of that, if he does half of a hundred million, that's 50 million. So that means if he's giving you 20% of gross revenues, you're sitting on 10 million for doing nothing but putting this out. You're doing nothing but pressing a button. I would take everything in house. When I was a little boy, my favorite radio personality was Tom Joyner. Mm. Right. And I remember I used to read the trades. Like my mom used to think I was crazy because I would have her get me these things that most kids wouldn't ask for. I was like, I, I want, I want billboard monitor, which is a trade magazine for radio. I wanted, you know, all of the, um, <laughs> Trade magazines, I would go to the library and look at stuff in microfiche. I would read what Tom Joyner was doing. And what I found interesting was Tom Joyner got a Barry Gordy move, and it's not what you're thinking. ABC gave Tom Joyner a contract where they owned his name. You serious? If you find him, ask him. And we talking about, like, the godfather when it comes to radio. Uh-huh. Wow. Let me tell you something. What Tom Joyner did over time was take his bread and stacked it. He bought his name back and then created a company called Reach Media. Bought his name back. The fact that we even have to say that, thats that sounds like slavery all over again. He wouldn't be the first slave to buy his name back. Yeah, to buy his freedom. <laughs> wow. But the thing of it is, right, I'm going to give you another story real quick. The point of it is when it comes to Tom, though, right, Tom began to call his shots. And when he built Reach Media to the point where it was valuable because he had all of those markets. He had all that distribution. He had all the channels. He hired the people to go out and sell his show. You know, when Radio 1 came calling, it had to come with a check and stock. Mm. Which means not only they gave him money, but they gave him ownership. And while that stock may have fluctuated, it might not have been worth shit at that time. Over time, it made him, it made him, you know, an even more wealthy man. Listen, I've been to Tom Jordan's house. I've, I've eaten with Tom Jordan. He has a personal trainer that's also a chef. Wow. He has a private beach on Miami Beach. He has a black brand at the time. It was a black brand new um, Bentley. And it was so smooth. He was probably doing 100 on 95. That's how smooth the ride was. And I was like, Mr. Jordan, he's like, call me Tom. I said, Tom. He's like, yeah. I said, you know, you're going 98 miles an hour. He said, whoo, sometimes this gets away from me. <laughs> he had a jet that was black. He called it jet black and had one red stripe like the A-team van on it. His. When you call your shots, the people that who would try to put you on have to partner with you on your own terms. If you're mm-hmm. coming like Oliver Twist, which what too many of you Negroes do, please, sir. Yeah. Might I have a deal? <laughs> All you Negroes are waiting for Puppy to come down to sign you to revolt. Mm. And it's I not going to happen. What, what did Jay-Z say on the best of both worlds? Or Michael Jordan, I play for the team I own. Sing to him, Kells. That's it. The best of both worlds. Like, I'm Michael Jordan. I play for the team I own. You might see me other places. You might see me on a Facebook. You might see me on an Instagram. But you got your own. Got my own. You can download this on Apple Music. You can right now get Sell It Like Jesus on Kindle at Amazon.com, but you can still buy it at businessbullyshow.com. You can check out 
everything that I'm saying. Right now, this broadcast is on live. If I turn on Business Bully TV right now, right my there, big right. head and your big head pop up. Yeah. Right now, live. Yeah. yeah. And it ain't going nowhere because, like James Brown said, I paid the cost to be the boss. Go yeah. back. God rest Chadwick Boseman, but he did a phenomenal yeah. job in playing James Brown and talking about the importance of ownership. Mm-hmm. You know, because they was trying to do to him what they did to Little Richard. They was trying to do to him what they did to, uh, oh, God, why can't I call uh, him? Chuck Berry. Yep. They were trying to hit him with a Cadillac. Yep, Chuck Berry. Cadillac yeah, they were trying to hit him with a Cadillac. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck Berry should be a billionaire off of my ding a alone, my dude. Get it, rock and roll. They should be paying a tax to him or his family or something. He created a genre. That's crazy. Bro, they take our fucking DNA and make billions off of it and don't say shit. Ask Henrietta Lacks' family. Literally. Literally. Just take, take, this take your self-generating cells and say fuck it. They're taking melanin from Sorry. black people right now. They're yep. taking melanin from black aborted babies, and they're mm-hmm. mixing it with another. They're mixing it with another metal and creating a, a, a hyperactive sunscreen so that white folks can walk around on Mars. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's a fact. Mm. You can Google that shit. Mm. When you don't understand your value, the people who do understand your value will take advantage. And I'm going to tell you something. That's not white supremacy. That's business. Because mm. any business owner, be he black, white, red, green, male, or female. I'm trying to get the most I can get out of the people who work for me for the least amount of money I possibly can. That's business. And the shit is important to you. Like when you look at it like this, when you like, you ever see DuckTales or or, am I too old for DuckTales? I don't think I heard of DuckTales, but I've seen a lot of shows, but I think I got to catch up on that. Okay. So (laughs) DuckTales, they actually have a new one out. You can watch it on Disney Plus. But DuckTales follows Huey, Dewey, and Louie, Donald Duck, Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck lives in a town called Duckburg. Scrooge McDuck is the richest duck in the world. This motherfucker is so rich, he don't even trust the banks. You know where he keeps his money? Where? In an 85-story money bin. Wow. He has so much money, he swims in that shit. (laughs) And they go around the world solving mysteries and shit because Mr. McDuck got the fucking money. He's swimming in gold so much and he's spitting out gold coins like you'd spit out water in your own fucking pool. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, this motherfucker got so much money, he built a time machine. Like, Scrooge McDuck got bread. Scrooge (laughs) Scrooge McDuck got more bread than Tony Stark. I got money on that shit. So all the shit you see Elon Musk doing, Scrooge McDuck was doing it first. Here's the point. Right? What I'm trying to get you to understand is, who did Scrooge McDuck answer to? Nobody. No fucking body. Because mm-hmm. he called his shots. And whenever he did a deal, he had a board of directors and he could fire them whenever he felt like it too. Because he knew what it was. We don't operate from that standpoint. We're so happy to get a job. Mm-hmm. We're so happy to get a job. And don't ever stop to think that even if you're making $100 an hour, somebody can afford to pay you $100 an hour. So how much are you really making them? That's and, the that, and there it is. Yeah, that's the question. Wow. Dave, man, you were killing this. Because I think this time is very important in what you've done with the platform. Business Bully TV is very timely. Because I think Joe Budden has shown that it's not as cool as what people think it is to start a podcast, create the podcast, just so you can get signed for a few mil. And then your white counterparts come in a few years later and sign for 100 a hundred. Let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. If you had to choose between Sid, your girlfriend, mm-hmm. and my wife, and you had two positions, both absolutely equal, would you dare pay my wife more than you pay yours? No. Okay. You got any brothers or sisters? Yes, sir. One brother. You got one brother. Older or younger? Uh, older. Okay. How old is he? Uh, 28. He's 28. And you're 23. Three. Okay. So imagine that you all of a sudden wake up with my money, Mm. right? And you find somebody who's a lot like you and you also have your brother. Mm. Is there any universe where you're paying that dude more than you're paying your brother? Nope. I don't know him like that. Okay. Now imagine this. If you're a white man, And you go out here, you buy up these white companies so that you can make the most of technology and you can make the most of distribution. And another white man who has a huge white audience comes along. Are you going to pay him more than you will pay some Negro? Yeah. When in the history of ever has that happened? Yeah. 
Davis a genius giving out. Hey, I'm telling y'all, man, that's why y'all got to keep tuning into these conversations and sharing this. Man, Samusa, I feel you. Yeah, I, I'm just I'm trying to understand. Yeah. You know, like pro athletes, how much money does, does the dude that can afford to pay someone $100 million? Exactly. Like but that's exactly. what I've been saying. I've been saying since <laughs> I was a kid. I remember I, I, I remember watching Chris Rock. And Chris Rock was like, hey, bitch. <laughs> the guy who's paying Shaquille O'Neal, wealthy. And at that point, my whole life changed. I was like, hold the fuck up. What you mean somebody pays Shaquille O'Neal? Yeah. I just thought it was generated from, I, I just thought it was just like, oh, I didn't know where the fucking money came. I never stopped to look. Mm. I thought the money and everything else, but I never stopped to think that, okay, that guy in that box, that old white guy in that box, because it's always an old white guy in that box. Okay, I'll spot you, I'll spot you Charlotte. But that was well after my adult years. I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to make y'all understand. Okay, hold on. I got. I got. Roy says they're trying to Dak Prescott Joe Button. Wrong. <laughs> <That's real>. Wrong. <laughs> I, I, I vehemently disagree with that. Hey, break it down. I'm listening. Here, here, here's the thing, right? Who is Dak Prescott? Yeah, he has no Super Bowls. Not even that. But who is he? Like for people who don't watch Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys you just running say back. The most lucrative franchise in sports. Franchise okay, cool. quarterback. When I yeah. signed to K104 in Dallas, remember, I, I told you, Tom Jordan fan, I went out of my way to get signed to K104. You want to mm. know why? Because everybody at K104 was a millionaire. Mm. Which was arguably like the Dallas Cowboys of radio. You could say so that. So when yeah. I came in, they, they signed me. We had a signing thing in the office, mm. on our pictures, got my, uh, got my shirt, the whole nine. They gave me a GMC. Burgundy mm. DMC to match my K-104 shirt. And they, said, they said, Dave Anderson, there are only three forces in Dallas that matter. The Cowboys, the Mavericks, and us. Welcome mm. to K-104. And I was like, holy shit. This is crazy. And then I said, well, let me ask y'all something. Y'all, y'all don't have a 401k? And it was like, oh, no, no. Your 401k is K-104. We the shit around here. We the super jocks. We made Tom Joyner. We mm. made Great Street. Like mm. you don't get to the to the top of the mountain unless you come through K one hundred four, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, you know the owner is a guy named Hyman Charles, old Jewish man, love me to death. Right, dude says to me, he says, "Dave Anderson, I've been watching you." He never called me Taz that. He always called me by my name. He said, "Dave Anderson, I've been watching you." He was like, "Out of everyone I've known since I've had this radio station." You are the biggest opportunist I've ever seen in my life. He said, you're arguably the, the, the ultimate opportunist. I said, thank you, sir. Unfortunately, I must correct you. And he stood back in his rocking chair and he said, <laughs> I said, I know it might look like I'm an opportunist. It might look like I'm the ultimate opportunist. But what I really am is you. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm a capitalist. And he smiled. He said, I'll see you later. And that was my cue to get up. So the next day, I go to my locker. Now, keep in mind, this is 06. Okay. okay. So nobody knows nothing about uh, 10 years later, Donald Trump won for president. Mm-hmm. He got me this talking Donald Trump doll. It was an apprentice doll. And it said, you're fired. He said to my favorite capitalist, and he signed it for me. The point in all that is the Cowboys are America's team. Dak Prescott is just an interchangeable son of a bitch. Uh, you say he's a running back, right? Quarterback. Quarterback. Okay, he's a quarterback. So is Tony Romo. Yeah, you can be replaced. <laughs> uh, what's my man? Before Tony Romo, what's his goddamn name? You had a Troy Aikman in the 90s. We had three of them guys, three Super Bowls. Troy Legend. Aikman. Legend. And at the end of the day, the only person who can't be replaced in Dallas is Jerry, Jerry fucking Jones. Jones. That's facts, because he was there in the 90s. He now, fired Jimmy Johnson. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. <laughs> Jerry Jones is so ill, right? When they were building what you now know as AT&T Stadium, because I lived in Arlington at the time when they were building that. Oh, it was so directly across from Walmart, and it was a poor black neighborhood. Well, not poor, but it yeah. wasn't poppin'. It. It, was, mm-hmm. it was an older neighborhood, and mostly black people lived there. Right. Um, there was this one standout old black lady. He bought her out for quite a few M's. Then, in the process of building... AT&T Stadium, which was Cowboy Stadium at the time, um, what wound up happening was some construction worker got a hook put in his back 
and got a situation fucked up. Yeah, he what? got like 50 million. I know he's happy. Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones didn't bat an eye. Jerry Jones showed up at my 30th birthday party. Showed up at my 30th birthday party, took two chicks home. On my kid's life. Came up in the VIP downtown Dallas, took two, because he, he liked the chocolate, took two chicks home and went on about his business. <laughs> That's power. Money talks, man. And y'all can say that, see, Steve is saying, Tony got paid, though. Did he? He got paid more from CBS right now than he really did in the league. Now, he did get paid in the league, but his CBS yeah. money is like, what, 17 a year? Yeah. Just for call a football game? But But here's what people are missing. Jerry Jones could afford to pay a nobody who never took one snap $50 million for getting a hook in the back for mm. building a stadium and not bat an eye. So whatever money he gave Tony Romo was nothing. This was the same dude that my sophomore year of college sat down with Deion Sanders and said, okay, Deion, let's have it. And you know how I know? Because Deion Sanders told me, and then they went and made a Pizza Hut commercial about it. Deion Sanders said that he sat down with Jerry Jones. He said, so how much you want this year? Hmm. 15, 20 million? Deion Sanders, prime time in his prime, must be the money, was like both. And hmm. Jerry Jones said, okay. He said both. So not how much you want, 15, 20 million? Dion said both. That means 35 million. At that particular point in the mid-90s? 94. That's unheard of, man. As a cornerback? As a black night, man? Night, night. Yeah. People talk about Bo Jackson, but y'all forget. Deion Sanders yeah. played two sports and played offense and defense. Still got bread. And by the way, he still loves Jerry Jones to this day. To this day. Yeah, because he cut the checks for him. He could be old and racist, but when it came to business, he got the check for him. And he taught him certain aspects of the business. That's the other thing. Y'all got to know how to use your snakes. Y'all don't do that. Oh, use your snakes. Hey, say that, Dave. No, y'all got to use your snakes. Use your snakes. I like that. Listen, tree right there. I'm from Dallas. Dallas, you're not lying. You got no reason to lie. Listen, I'm a creative dude, but I can't come up with the creative shit I've seen. Mm, Use your snakes. Very Povich lie detector, and all my shit will check out. Mm. I don't need to. I said, multiply that full number of players on this team and add gas for their yachts and their planes. Yeah. Right? Deion played the Super Bowl in the World Series in the same damn year. Yeah. That's how good he was. Y'all can talk all that Bo Jackson shit you want to. <laughs> Prime time is what that is. Yeah. Prime time is what that is. Deion, Deion, in the same year, he had a number one record, a Super Bowl. Legend. Like, say what you want. But here's the thing, right? You have to use your snakes. Mm. Sometimes, and I, and I had this conversation with my wife, right? She was like, you know, for a fact, such and such was talking shit about you. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> wow. But you're doing business with them. Yeah, yeah I know. Why? I said, because I'll do whatever I need to do to make sure that my last name is secure. Mm. And if that means that this motherfucker don't know that I, that he was talking shit about me, it don't matter because guess what? They need me. See, I'm a I'm a biblical scholar. People don't understand this. I'm a theologian. That's what a theologian is. I mean, I can preach and I am an ordained minister, but I'm a biblical scholar. I am a theologian. That's what that means. Mm-hmm. A master of theology, if there yeah. is such a thing, but that's what it is. Here's what people don't understand. The Bible says, I will make your enemies your footstools. Ooh, yep. Right? Joseph's own brother, not stepfather of Jesus. Yeah, brother, break Joseph. that down. Joseph's own brothers mm. attempted, conspired to, attempted to kill, and then sold him into slavery. Dirty, man. Dirty as hell. Right? But they all had to show up when, when that famine hit. They ain't know they were showing up to Joseph. But hey, God had in to, like this. Yeah. God <laughs> had the way of turning your ass into Jodeci in the desert. It's been in the hours. You're going to be on your knees. That's it. You out here begging. You don't know what the fuck it is. You begging. And so what happens is, you know what you said, but you mm. still got to come see me. Mm. You know you didn't believe in me, but mm. you still got to come see me. And guess mm. what? I'm going to give you that number one Brandon Lee. You know what that is? What's that? The crow. Because you wow. about to eat. Mm. That's the thing. I don't mind. Look, you can be, I ain't got to like you to make money off of you. Mm. Now ask me again about Joe Budden. Ah. See how that works? 
Yeah. They, they don't like Joe Budden. Joe Budden's not a friend of them. They have no vested interest in Joe Budden other than to take his audience. Mm. And they took his audience. And now they're like, okay. Wow. Now That's what it was for. It they created leverage off of something that he did not value enough. Wow. I'm speechless right now because that's why I get it now. They got him to get his numbers. It's all you ever are. Go back and watch the matrix and, 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 and peep the fact that, that Morpheus told you to them, all you are is a battery. Wow. All you are is a battery. Wow. That part. Yeah. yeah. When I took so myself yeah. out of the machine. When I took myself out of the machine, they all said, oh, you'll be back. I said, if I come back, they're going to have to put so much money on this fucking table. Mm. When I come back, it's going to have to be something so massive that they can't even fathom it. And when I come back, you're all going to call me by my name. And it won't be the first one. Mm. And sure enough, hey, Mr. Anderson, how are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you? How you been? Good to see you. You got to give me my respect. Mm. You got wow. Point blank and period. And that's what it comes down to. Y'all want somebody to respect you now, but they can't respect you if the, it's like my kids, right? My wife and I have two children. We take care of our children. We're not supposed to get an applause for that or no shit. That's our yeah. job. We we had the children, we take care of the children. However, them kids can't spike the football until such time as they made their way out in the world without mommy and daddy's purse strings. Cause you can't, and I, I, I'll tell my oldest, and I'll tell, I'll tell my youngest when my youngest get to a certain age. You can't call the shots if you on my payroll. Mm. Your bills come to me. Mm. If they're in your name, who co-signed? Mm. Who's paying that rent? I got, when I get off this um, podcast, I'm gonna go pay my daughter's rent. You understand? That's the job. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is until such time as you call your shots, no one will respect you. It is the same in parenthood. It is the same in business. I call my own shots. So now you have to respect me because I don't need you. I fired one, two, I fired seven clients last week and didn't bat an eye. To put that another way, seven, 20, 40, 60. I'm, I'm, I'm rounding up because let's say the average ticket for each one of them is 20,000. It could be higher, it could be lower, but let's say average ticket is 20,000. So let's count, shall we? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40. So I dropped 140,000 like you dropped $140 for a pair of Jordans. Mm. And I did not bat an eye because my peace of mind and my respect means more to me than your jaw jacket and the headaches you caused me. If your last name ain't Anderson, you don't get to cause me headaches. Yo, y'all getting some free game right now, man. I'm telling y'all, like, bro, is this podcast is legendary, man. Okay, he but now he see he seen me kick him out. Yeah, I ain't married to nobody but my wife. Woo, Dave, man, tell them what your cash app is because you was preaching for a whole hour. Like, y'all really got to show some love right now, man. Before we get yeah. out of here, for real, yeah. like support, support, support. Man, Dave, my last question for the night. You've killed this. This has been super fun. What is next for us as black creatives? Because, again, the Joe Budden situation or just seeing what's going on with the deal that Gilly and Wallow signed or just I'm because me as a as a young creative, I'm studying all these deals and I'm starting to realize that's not the way you've already mentored me in that field. And that's why we're doing Business Bully TV, um, all of this great content. So what's next? Or which, or how should we move next as black creatives? Because apparently corporate America is not the way. All right. So what's next for black creatives? And I've said this before. Black creatives need to start building together. Mm. I, I'm going to tell you this, right? There's a show on Hulu that kind of documents, and it fictionalizes a lot of it. But mm-hmm. a lot of it is the core, like the guts of what happened are there. Go look at that Wu-Tang series. Oh, I loved it. I just and realized yeah. that all of them, with the exception yeah. of Method Man, was just okay by themselves. Mm-hmm. But together... Crazy. Crazy. You can say what you want. You can't find me. And, and this is not because I'm a huge Wu-Tang fan. This has nothing to do with my relationship with the RZA. This has mm-hmm. absolutely everything to do with facts. You mm-hmm. can't name me another rap crew where pound for pound 
The majority of their members are multi-platinum artists five, six, seven, ten times over. You can't do it. You can't name it. They still got money. Dave, I Googled it. And me and Sid, we were so impressed. I went from top to bottom. The lowest net worth was like 12 million. Mm -hmm. How is a group of eight plus, 10 plus, everybody 16 mil, 18 mil, 20, 25, 30? Everybody got paid. Because the Wu-Tang are the temptations without the drama. I like that. Okay. When I, yeah. towards the end of my run with the Ricky Smiley show, after I put him in 30 plus markets and all that, um, there was a lot of turmoil because people wanted to start acting like they knew more than what I did. And a certain member of the show um, was like, yeah, we're going to interview Wendy Williams and we're going to ask her some hard questions. I said, you don't want, yes, you don't want no parts of Wendy. <laughs> you said, I worked for her. I know this woman. Wendy will chew you up and spit you out and drink her tea and not bat an eye. You don't want that smoke. I'm telling you, like, don't do it. Well, why not? I said, listen, I don't tell you to do whatever part of the show this person did. So please don't tell me how to produce. I'm telling you what it is. Mm. And he was like, well, where do you get off? I said, 19. He said, what's 19? I said, 19. He said, what's 19? I said, 19 is the number of temptations that have come and gone. Mm. The group is still the group. 19. Why these rap niggas get all up in your guts? Not watch this rap nigga get all up in your guts. Watch Jeez. these rap niggas get all up in your guts. You know what I'm saying? Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Even ODB and his craziness still brought something to the group. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Hey, daddy. <laughs> hey, I got your money. This dude is so thorough. He simple, knocks me off my feet, and just took the first two notes. Mm. Go listen to Stevie Wonder's songs in the key of life and then go listen to 19 uh go listen to a 1976 and listen to the first two notes. Boom boom. And then go boom 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 Started in 89 and did not drop until like 92, 93. Mm. Patience. Patience, yes, sir. Collaboration, growth, and creating a movement that is bigger than the sum of its parts. Mm. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Name all the members of the Wu-Tang without Googling it. Go. Man, and I'm a young cat. As far as I know, I can go with RZA. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Jizz is one of them. Uh, Method Man, Red. Mm -hmm. Uh, ODB, that's five right there. Red's Those not in the Wu-Tang. I know. Hmm? Red Man's not in Wu-Tang. Oh, so see? see? I'm wrong. Take right? it Magic Evil. Man's all. all I know is what, four? Yeah. Four you five. know, even with me, let me see. Ghostface Killer, you got Ghostface, yeah, Ray, I missed Ray, that. Ray, 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 the Rizzo, the Jizzle, Old Dirty Bastard, Capadonna, Capadonna. you know, yeah. like, there's so many of those cats. And that's not even counting the Killer Bees. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, they're so... They're, they're so beyond what people don't understand. Like the Rizzo was like, we're going to put out an album, one album. We're going to charge whatever it was, $10 million for it or whatever. And you can't be, it can't be heard by anybody but who owns it for the next 20 years or the next 99 years, whatever the fuck it was. And then the dude who started um, price gouging people for those AIDS medications got investigated by the government and the government seized that album. Are you serious? Google it. I'm not that creative. No reason to lie. <laughs> the truth will set you free. What I'm trying to get people to understand is like people look at the bully gang, right? Mm -hmm. And M-E-T-H-O-D, man. <laughs> when people look at the bully gang, like I tell people all the time, the reason that I didn't call my situation a mastermind is because a mastermind is about the ego of the coach. Do I have an ego? Absolutely. Is it healthy? Absolutely. Is it warranted? Absolutely. Um, but it's not about me. It's about the collective. Mm. If somebody in the, like, think about how gangs operate. If somebody in a gang got a problem, everybody in the gang got a problem. Somebody yeah. in the gang wound up pregnant, we buy out the registry. Mm. We show up. You ain't never got to be alone. You never do a live video by yourself if you got the gang with you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so what people don't understand is when you are a part of a collective and everybody's working towards something bigger than themselves, there's an, there's an incentive to keep growing and keep going. Mm -hmm. But right now, everybody wants to get their collective nut off and start hitting and quitting. Nobody want to turn down the lights. 
Not playing any music. Right, no Jeffy Osborne. <laughs> you know what I mean? No Nita Baker. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, no with all my heart, I love you, baby. None of that. None of that. None None of that. that. Nothing. I mean, it's not even an old 504. You ain't got to say too much <laughs> from the look of your... What <laughs> Xavier said? One bed. What's that? Back to the drum line. That's it. Right. You know, but th- that's the that's the gag, right? Mm. If you want to win, you listen, if you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go together. Mm. There we go. Yeah. Name, name me a podcast crew that's made up of a bunch of people under 30 who everybody is thorough. It doesn't exist. You want to why it doesn't exist? Because y'all are too selfish motherfuckers to realize that if everybody eats, we are. Everybody wins. Man, I was just having that conversation. Man. Yeah, we just got to drop those egos in two. As black people, we have to stop thinking that it's limited resources. And I think that that's where all that stems from. Is yeah. that Massa only has so many breadcrumbs and you're blocking minds. My granddaddy would would take me out and uh, we go work on cars, changing oil, or he had me build a wall way before Trump's people were talking about it. <laughs> like, I mean, we go get the quick cement mix and the buckets and I'm splatting and, you know what I'm saying, doing all that type of shit. And um, what wound up happening was he would talk to me and he would just say these things. And, and I know what the fuck he was saying at the time because I was a little kid. I was like seven, eight years old out here cementing and doing all this shit. It kept me out of trouble. And he would say, Dave, a candle don't lose nothing by lighting another one. Mm. You don't lose y'all your a bunch of, The problem with y'all is y'all a bunch of firecrackers. So nobody wants to light up. Hmm. You know, even the whole no song tells you, you know, as oh, a flame burns a candle... <laughs> the candle feeds the flame. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so there has to be a bit of a symbiotic relationship. Right, right. It might be this one's time, so we all get behind this one, but then this one will go ahead. I remember I tried to, um, in in my downtime in between radio gigs, right, when I was working my way back up before I eventually retired, um, I got on Blog Talk, and there was this other kid on Blog Talk who had no radio experience, but he was doing great numbers because he was talking that shit and he was talking that relationship shit and all that type of stuff. And I was talking business shit. I said, look, man, let's join forces and whatnot. I'll come behind you, you know, and we'll treat it like how the daily show and the Colbert report were, were together. So yeah, John Stewart come on first and then Stephen Colbert would, would close it. Similar styles, different topics. Mm-hmm. And it was cool until I started having the number one show on blog talk. Start becoming and- competition. And then, you know, I mean, I had Maxwell on my show and Queen Latifah and DJ Cool and all these other people was coming on my show. Then I'm starting to do these crazy ass numbers and shit. Now, all of a sudden, you mad. But I had to remind old boy when I saw him in the barbershop and he lost his mind, start talking shit. I said, homie, if I take you to a radio station right now, you can't run no board. Mm -hmm. I'm like, homie, the most experience you have on doing any type of broadcast is from a phone. Mm -hmm. You you know what happened to Blog Talk Radio? What happened to it? One of my companies bought it. Wow. Step stool. Step stool. <laughs> like, so the, the point is, it's not about me. The yeah. point is, if you had just stayed in the pocket, if you would have just allowed greatness to happen and realized that you wasn't losing nothing, like your blessing, you'd still be there. You'd be right here, chilling. But we get too caught up in the personal shit. And, and like, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't really care if you're winning right now. Like, I'll give you an example. So, so right, my, my man Zabian, right? Zabian got uh, got a beautiful wife who's got this whole weight loss thing popping. Um, they also have a... Um, toilet paper, right? A toilet paper. Yeah. yeah. They have uh, Triumph Tissue, right? It's three-ply, it's luxury toilet paper. You can only get it by subscription. 100% black-owned and distributed. You know, it's like wiping your ass with silk. <laughs> Am I mad? Am I trying to get in the toilet paper business? No. Nah. Yeah. They're my people. And when they win, I win. Yeah. I'm not mad. You want to know why? Because they're my clients. Mm. It don't matter, homie. I don't listen. I don't ever have to wrestle again, homie. I'm Paul Heyman. I'm Bobby Heenan. I'm a phenomenal promoter. I'm an excellent manager. And whatever you bring to me, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to make it shine. Mm. 
I don't have to sing all the songs. I'm a hell of a producer. Babyface didn't sing all his songs. He wrote a bunch of them. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Somebody got to be Babyface. And sometimes somebody got to be Michael. Yeah. But that don't mean that Tito ain't dope on that bass. Mm. That don't mean that Jermaine can't get down on a regular uh, a regular electric guitar and sing Let's Get Serious. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? But then you watch somebody like Marlon who always wanted to be like Mike and just didn't have it. Mm. Come on. Name me a hot Marlon Jackson record. We'll be waiting all night. <laughs> Girl, I want your body. You know, I love your body. No, I said hot Marlon Jackson record. Never mind. It's not a... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And Michael was so fucking, Michael was so humble that, that there was no, th- you're too young to know this. I went to the Victory Tour because there was no Thriller Tour. Mm. Greatest selling album in the history of sound did not have a tour. He did a tour with his brothers as a favor to his mom. Wow. Wow. And when they got that Pepsi deal, they wanted Michael. Joe made him take all the brothers. And Michael was like, yeah, cool. Let him, let him have it. It was Michael got his hair burnt. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But Mike still did it for his brothers. Some people are just going to be more phenomenally talented than you, and that's okay. Ride the wave. Method Man is always going to be a movie star. He ain't never going to have a TV show if he don't want one. If he does want one, he's going to have it. He's going to shine. He's he's tall. He's light-skinned. He's charming. He's a handsome guy. He's funny as hell. Like, Meth checks a lot of boxes. That's why Meth can go from doing a show with with, um, Stephen Baldwin's daughter to being in Luke Cage on Netflix. Like Wu Tang's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. <laughs> Name yeah. another rap crew that can say that. Yeah. 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 You, until until young people start adapting a Wu Tang type of mindset, mm. you won't lose. And what do Wu Tang always say? Wu Tang is for the children. Y'all kids better wake the fuck up. Dave, man, you should have charged. Tonight was crazy, man. Tonight was crazy, Dave. You dropped so many bars, man. It's much appreciated. This is going to get better each and every single week. I already know it. Before we bounce, OG, where can everybody follow you? Watch Business Bully TV, everything. All right. So Business Bully TV is available on all platforms. Let me see. (gasps) Amazon Fire (laughs) TV, Roku TV, Apple TV, um, Android, iOS um, Samsung TV, anywhere that you watch streaming television, you can find us. And then there's uh, there is uh, streaming live twenty four seven on demand at businessbully.tv. You can find me at the Business Bully on Facebook and Instagram, and on Snapchat. Are we still doing Snapchat now? I got one. I don't know if we're still doing it. Um, <laughs> Snapchat and Twitter at D A as in Dave Anderson, Business Bully. Oh wait, 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 wait. Hold on one second. I love Uncle Dave. Always a pleasure and learning experience. I'm trying. Um, she was says I, I can't afford you tonight. <laughs> Listen, I'm see, and it's the other thing. Let, okay, real quick, then I'm gonna let you go. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you good. Listen to me. Y'all gotta stop saying what you can't afford. Mm. Right? Um like all right, so watch, watch this. Watch this. Y'all don't know this. Can I make some announcements? We got a couple minutes. That's right. I'm gonna make some announcements. So the one thing that black people don't have, aside from access to capital, is access to technology. Mm. So I've taken a great deal of my money and I've invested into a company I bought out of India. Mm. And what we're going to do with this company, we're calling it Bully AI. Right? So I bought a bunch of artificial intelligence and a bunch of amazing, uh, a team of amazing people, developers, to work that out so that you have bots and responsible uh, responsive artificial intelligence and websites, and we got plans starting at seven dollars a month. So, say mm. you're a hairstylist, I've already killed style seat just that quick. Mm. You know, say you're a dentist office, I've already killed the, the, the dental platform just that quick. If you're a lawyer, if you're a coach, an author, a speaker, if you've got any type of e commerce business, I have literally killed every single type of um business you can think of to the point where my bot can interview you for jobs, my bot can go ahead and take your payments. My bots can answer all of your questions responsively, and I'm doing it at about starting at $7 a month, right? So that's one. Two, the thing about me is that I want people who are willing to do the work and cut the check. I don't care how you bleed because 10 of y'all can't pay my bills. That's why I can Mm. fire seven and not bat an eye. Mm. Don't say what you can't afford. Ask how you can afford it. 
you never got on the calendar. You, 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 you can't just turn yourself off. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got to put yourself in a position where it, it makes more sense. On top of that, I'm expanding the Winston box because there's still a bunch of people who still want to be on the plantation. Why? I don't know. <laughs> okay. But all right. You want to be on the plantation? That's fine. Um, if you need business attire, and you're a big and tall man and you need business attire strictly, we're about to launch a division that just handles business attire every single month, mm-hmm. you know, every quarter. We're doing it quarterly. And I think the box would be like a buck fifty, two hundred, but you're gonna get like three hundred, four hundred dollars worth of clothes mm. for a buck fifty. And if you're big and tall, you know that's a steal. Mm. So I'm doing these things to put people in position, but people have to catch on. But don't ever say what you can't do. Say how can you afford it? Say how can I make this happen? Ask the four most powerful words that you can ever form into a question. What are my options? Mm. Don't say no. Like counter, you, you ain't got on that calendar. Yet. I, I don't listen. I, 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 don't, I don't see y'all on that calendar. You know, I hear y'all talking, but I don't see you on the calendar. I put my calendar. I know I can help. Yeah, hey, and hit them up on Cash App. Y'all just got free game. You just <laughs> got free game. You want an these hour? People. You want these an people hour. to be Cash App me so bad they never cash. He charged for this, man. He gave you an hour and a half. This is foolishness, man. This is free game. They're never going to. Look, there we go. It's right there. You already they're never going to cast at me. <laughs> this is craziness, man. Y'all get in church. Oh, listen. I'm trying to teach y'all, man. Like, I-, I want y'all to realize it's a different type of ball game. You know, hey, see, what are my options? Hey, hop on that calendar. Yep. Get you some of that free game. Yep. That's what you do. You know what I'm saying? Steve said, next monster on me. <laughs> I'm t- y'all, next week about to be even better. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Tell next your friends. Crazy, man. Um, yo, shout out to Chadwick Bozeman. That that yeah. that brother. R. God R. knows. Yeah. I mean, and I told folks like In that. Silence. Just just killing it. He was yeah. busy doing the work. Yeah. Yo, that's crazy. Somebody said Uncle Dave could talk about mosquitoes <laughs> and I would listen. Facts, you gonna hey, learn yo, something. <laughs> yo, I'm trying to tell you the, the good thing about mosquitoes is only the females bite. Wow. See, he just Dave Chappelle's y'all. Y'all just said talk about toilet paper, Eddie. Talk about mosquitoes. Then <laughs> he's gonna make it bang. Yo, listen, the thing of it is uh, here's what I want y'all to do. Last thing, and I promise we're done because I, I I wanna get some I wanna get to bed. I'm tired. I want you to sit down. Like, I'm begging you, if you don't do nothing else, I'm begging you, please sit down and write down what your gifts are. Mm. Like, literally, just don't go crazy. Don't make a fucking CVS receipt list. Just top five things. And I want you to hold on to that list and take it wherever you go, like physically write it down, right? Yeah. And put space in between one, two, three, four, and five. Then what I want you to do is I want you to find four people that you know, love you and care for you and find one person that you don't know whether or not they like you or not and ask them, what are my best qualities? Mm. Right? Yeah. Then you start to look to see if any of what you feel your best qualities are continue to show up in those five people. Hmm. Then the one that's the most consistent, that's your gift. And that's the one that you nurture. And that's the one you, you, you put on. Once I realized that I was making more money running my mouth when the mic was off, telling people how to make money, hmm. and it doesn't matter. What, listen, you can, Xavier will tell you because he's, 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 he's in my gang. It don't matter if you coach women's basketball. It don't matter if you sell toilet paper. It don't matter if you sell multicolored jackets. I'm going to give you this work hmm. because that's what my gift is. Hmm. My gift is taking your business and finding a way to make it lucrative. He said, I tell my clients, so there's 77 reasons why you the shit. That's a long ass list. I ain't mad at you, Lori. You're going to be confident by the time you're done with that list. <laughs> That's what that is. You know, I, mean, I, I, I Listen, at this point, I got 54 million reasons why I'm the shit. And I just mm. don't care. And, and, and that's what it is. And the thing of it is, like, anybody can talk about how much money they made. How much money did you make other people? There you go. That's where my strength is. My strength is not in the how much money I make. It's in how much money I help generate people who for people who look like me. There's very few people who, who work with me who don't look like me. Mm. 
It's not that I'm repelling everybody else. It's just that those are the people because they know they're in a safe space. Like women don't have to worry about me trying to fuck them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dudes don't have to worry about me. Like, you know, I'm going to bust your balls a bit because that's my job. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about, you know what I mean, being treated like you're a piece of shit. Like, that's not my thing. Now, Mm -hmm. if you're acting like a piece of shit, I'm going to treat you accordingly. But I'm going to point out this is why I'm treating you like this because that's what you like. Mm -hmm. So I I, I need folks to, to get their list together and start spending more time with themselves and, and figuring out what makes sense to them. Like what's the one thing? Like if I went, God forbid, Jesus name, if I went blind tomorrow, I could still do this. Mm. You know, if I went deaf tomorrow, I could still do this. If I couldn't speak, they, they got the machines now. I'll be like Stephen Hawking. Yeah. I'll be, be T painting this shit. Typing it up. <laughs> Fuck you, motherfucker! <laughs> Let me tell you some shit, y'all Negroes didn't listen. Like that's what I'm saying. Like, just look. Yeah, that's it. I know what yeah. my gifts are. Yeah, you ain't got you ain't got to agree. You ain't got to like it. But until such time as you listen, do my numbers, then we can talk. Thanks. That's it, and that's what I'm saying. But I'm not special, mm. Caleb. I'm not special. Mm. I'm a kid from the hood. My mom was a single mom. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing special about me. I'm just a regular, everyday, average dude. I just decided to make some extraordinary choices. Simple. Very simple. When you choose, when you choose the extraordinary, there's there's nothing that like ordinary can't exist where extraordinary lays. Mm. Like you gotta vibrate higher. All right, like a used condom, I'm off for like herpes. I'll be back. Man, I just got a master class. I know y'all did too. Y'all better support Business Bully TV. Hit that cash app. Next week, it's going to be even better. Dave, you killed this. Moral of the story, don't be a quick nut. Take your time. I don't care what the fucking venue is. I don't care if it's Instagram, Facebook, MySpace, or, or Teletype. If there's somebody there, I'm going to be where they are. Hey, Life is good, man. Thanks for having me. Give a pump I am. I'm doing the show. My oh, man, Taz Daddy. Yes, to make millions for, for other people. I can make millions for Year in, year round. He not a rookie. He a man of many hats and different skills. Give him many struggling in business and watch him make it build. Hard to believe and please check the resume. Best selling author and showcase on Ebony. Two times Southern Entertainment.